Um, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Andy Baker. Andy is um, with the Syracuse Peace Council, as I mentioned earlier. He also works with Noon, and he's going to announce um, this evening the beginning of a very exciting campaign with the Haudenosaunee. So, Andy? Thank you, Tanya. Thanks to all who uh, are joining us this evening. Uh, uh, building on some of what Sue said, uh, Neighbors of the Onondaga Nation does our work <coughs> as allies to Onondaga. And so the, the kinds of uh, practices that Sue just talked about are based on that. How is it that we can support our neighbors who we see as having been uh, oppressed, having their land stolen from them, their culture uh, denied, uh, efforts at cultural genocide over the last several hundreds of years. So what can we as people from the dominant culture do to support them? Uh, and I guess I'd like to tell a little personal piece. Uh, when I was in high school, as part of American history, we read a book called Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee by Dee Brown that was about the decimation of Native peoples in the western part of the United States. And when I read that, it was new information to me that horrified me. Uh, it seemed to go so much against what we claimed to be as a nation. And when I read it, I had no uh, concept that at some point I could be part of helping to try and make amends for some of those crimes. And that's what I see neighbors of the Onondaga Nation as doing, to say what is it that we can do here and now to try and make amends to, to work with the Onondaga and other Haudenosaunee people. Um, Sue mentioned briefly about the land rights action, which the Onondaga filed in 2005. And it's based on the fact that through a series of so-called treaties that New York State made with the Onondaga, uh, beginning shortly after the American Revolution, the Onondaga land was taken from them. And those treaties, so-called treaties, were made in violation of the U.S. Constitution, in violation of federal legislation called the Non-Intercourse Act. Uh, and so they're, they're, they're really uh, invalid treaties. And federal courts have, have ruled in, in their favor, uh, not in the Onondaga case, but in the Oneida and Cayuga cases previous to the Onondaga. Uh, and Sue mentioned in 2005 when there was a news conference in the cookhouse at Onondaga uh, the, the afternoon after they filed their papers in court. And it was really a privilege to be there. Uh, there was such a feeling of it being a historic moment, a time when maybe change was uh, about to occur. Uh, unfortunately, just several weeks later, the Supreme Court ruled in the Oneida case that, uh, that although the the, 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 the facts of the case were accurate, that there was no, nothing that the courts would do about it, that the, the land was taken illegally, but tough luck. And then about six weeks later, in uh, the appeal of the Cayuga case, uh, an appeals court took that terrible Supreme Court decision and made it worse. Uh, so suddenly the legal ground shifted. Uh, but nonetheless, the Onondaga case moved forward. Uh, and. Uh, but there's little hope in our minds that, that the courts would rule positively. As you said, in uh, 2010, September of 2010, a federal judge in Albany dismissed the Onondaga case. Um, at, right after that happened, we began talking, as did people at Onondaga, so what do we do? We're not going to stop our quest for justice. We're not going to stop our quest to work together to preserve and protect the environment. And as those discussions continued, uh, there was an event as part of the land rights series that Sue mentioned, where uh, Tadadaho Sid Hill spoke along with Joe Heath, the lead attorney for the Onondaga. And Joe Heath said as part of that presentation, maybe what we need is a land rights movement rather than a land rights action. And a number of us thought that was a very provocative suggestion. And as we talked over the next six or eight months, uh, this idea began to germinate of developing a campaign focused on the 400th anniversary of the Turo Wampum Treaty, the first treaty that was signed between the Haudenosaunee and Europeans who came as immigrants to this land. 
Uh, and that the treaty lays off out a very, very powerful uh, vision of how peoples from very different uh, cultures and backgrounds, spirituality, ways of life, could live together in peace and friendship forever. And the, um, the Tura Wampum Belt is up here behind me. And, um, and uh, Chief Jake Edwards probably will talk a little later about in more detail about it. Uh, but we believe that that vision is something that we can take to the people of New York State to, as, as Tanya said earlier, to compel our government to live up to these treaties that were made in our name that have been repeatedly broken. Um, and the work that Sue described that Noon has done in Central New York, we feel has been really successful at helping people understand things differently, at helping people in our community recognize that we have a debt to pay, that, uh, that the, the way the Onondaga have been treated has been completely unjust, and that what they're calling for is working together for a future for all our peoples. That if we continue to pollute the air, the land, and the waters, that there's no future for any of us. So that we need to, to work together as neighbors, seeking justice together, and seeking environmental sustainability. So that, that's the focus, really, of this two-row wampum campaign. Um, uh, the, the slide you see there is, is from uh, a news conference that the Onondaga held in Washington, D.C. in late February where they announced the filing of their appeal. And it's very much based on the same idea as the two-row wampum campaign, that it's not the courts of the United States that are going to uh, offer justice. It's the people of the United States who can compel our governments to live up to these agreements. So when they went to Washington, they didn't just file papers in court, they appealed to the people of the United States to say it's our response, it's your responsibility, in their words, in my words, it's our responsibility to live up to these treaties which were made in our name. And that's the idea with this two-row wampum campaign, to take work we've been doing in central New York, out throughout New York State, to educate people about what has happened, the illegal actions that have been taken in our name, and also about the tremendous uh, power of Onondaga. Uh, some of you may know, but others uh, who are less familiar don't, that the Onondaga nation is perhaps unique here in North America in that they have always maintained their traditional governing structure. Almost every other native nation has had some form of Western-style democracy imposed upon them. The Onondagas have persistently re resisted that so that clan mothers of whom one is here, Frida Jacques, appoint chiefs who are appointed for life, who have the responsibility to think in the long-term interests of their community and to, to govern them. So we're calling on our people to understand the, the commitments we've made through these treaties and to force our government to, to live up to them, to live as sovereign neighbors where we're not trying to tell them or compel them how they should run their nations, how they should live, uh, but to work together in respect as equals. So as part of that uh, campaign, we have an active internet site which is already set up called honorthetworoad.org. Uh, we'll be adding a great deal of information to that site over time. We'll be launching social media campaigns, and we'll be conducting educational programs around the state. Uh, if some of you live in New York State, we encourage you to, to get involved and help work with us. Um, there's going to be many, many ways to do that. Um, and a focal point of the campaign is what we're calling a symbolic enactment of the, the two-row. You know, as I said, the treaty describes uh, two peoples traveling down the river of life in parallel. And so that's what we're going to do. We'll start in Albany, New York, and Haudenosaunee people will paddle canoes, and those of us who are allies will ride in boats side by side down the Hudson River from Albany to New York City over about a 10-day period starting in late July of 20, uh, 2013, a uh, year and a few months from now, uh, holding educational and cultural events all along the way, and then uh, ending here in New York City, uh, planning to get here for August 9th, which is the UN's uh, International Day of Indigenous Peoples, which is, will be a Friday in 2013, and then the following day having a large festival to celebrate the Tiro <coughs> Wampum and 
perhaps that will be here near the UN as a way to raise the international uh, part of this. And uh, we've been working closely with leadership at the Onondaga Nation in the conception and development of this plan. Uh, unlike most, unlike all of the other work Noon has done over the past 12 years, this is the first time that we've had a formal sort of partnership with the Onondaga Nation for this project, so that the Council of Chiefs has formally endorsed it, and we're working very closely together, particularly to, to plan the enactment part of it. Um, okay. um, when we went to the Onondaga Council and talked about this, the first formal conversation, one of the first things they said was that protecting the earth has to be absolutely central to this. That yes, we want justice for the illegal taking of our land, but protecting the earth needs to be at the core of this. Continuing the effort to stop hydrofracking in New York State. Uh, changing policies to prevent the, the continuation of global warming are critical. Protecting the land and waters throughout the state are critical. So that's what we'll be doing. Um, so, to keep going up to the next steps. Um, so there's a lot of things that we're working on. There's a number of committees working as part of the project on different aspects of it. We're working to finalize the logistics. Uh, one sort of uh, cute little story from my perspective to tell about this. You know, we had gone and talked with the Council of Chiefs about the project, and they seemed interested, but uh, it wasn't clear how much they were going to um, buy in or want to move ahead with it uh, with us. Uh, they have a very full agenda. They're a government that operates a full nation and all that entails, and a nation that's under siege from the largest uh, military and economic power on the face of the earth. Uh, so they have a, a lot to do. Uh, so. A month or so, a couple of months after we met with them initially, I had a phone conversation with Chief uh, Jake Edwards here about it and to try to feel him out what was their interest in it. And he just kind of offhandedly mentioned that, oh, uh, in a few weeks his nephew and some other Onondaga folks were going to go to Albany and paddle down the Hudson to sort of check it out and see if it was feasible. And and I thought, you haven't even told us that you want to work with us on this, and people are going to go and paddle down the Hudson River. So that gave us a feeling that this was something they were seriously uh, considering. And so they did a trial, uh, a short trial paddling run last summer. Uh, we're planning to do a much more complete uh, trial run this coming summer as well, and are very excited about that. So we're working to finalize the logistics on that. Uh, we're reaching out to organizations far and wide throughout New York State and beyond to work with us. Uh, we're delighted that Tanya and the American Indian Law Alliance are working closely with us on it. Uh, we're uh, in discussions with the Clearwater, the Hudson River Sloop Clearwater, about them being part of the campaign and being one of the ally boats that will participate, which uh, would be wonderful. Uh, we're working with other organizations around the state to get on board and build this as a, as a broad statewide effort. Uh, we're also trying to raise what for us is a tremendous amount of money to uh, be able to make all this happen effectively. Uh, so if there's people out there with fundraising expertise or connections to foundations, please let us know. Uh, and one of the other things we're doing is developing an honorary advisory committee of Haudenosaunee leaders and people that have uh, great visibility in the broader community to add support to the campaign and to come to some of the events to help bring media attention. Because our hope is that as we travel down the Hudson, we'll get the kind of attention that will get people to, to, to understand this and see it who have no concept of, of what we're talking about previously. So uh, Tanya is serving on that committee, uh, faith keeper from the Onondaga Nation, Oren Lyons, Suzanne Barjo from the Morning Star Institute, uh, Tom Porter uh, from Ghana Joe Legge, uh, the Chancellor of Syracuse University, Nancy Cantor, and uh, folk singer and activist Pete Seeger. And we're reaching out to many, many other folks as well and hope to add to that list significantly. So we hope that you'll uh, get involved and support that work. Uh, there's sign-up sheets 
that uh, are going to be maybe are already circulating. Uh, there's a variety of literature on the table back there. Uh, we really uh, want support from a wide range of people to make this successful. Uh, we, in terms of upcoming dates, um, uh, tomorrow we actually have our first New York City organizing meeting for the project, and are looking forward to that. We are we had a meeting at Albany uh, up last month. Uh, we're looking for places to do outreach. We're actually, we just found, figured out today that we'll have an outreach booth at the uh, Drunk Zone along the Hudson on Sunday. Uh, and if anyone wants to help us with that, Aya over here who's part of the committee is going to be uh, going to be taking the lead on that. We'll also be at the Clearwater Festival in mid-June along the Hudson a little further up. Uh, the second paddling trip, as I mentioned, will be uh, this coming summer. Uh, another thing to note is that um, uh, we're working closely with people from uh, the State University of New York College of Environmental Science and Forestry, which is at uh, which is in Syracuse, and they have a, a center for Native peoples and the environment, which is doing excellent work, helping trying to bridge the the kind of gap between. Uh, traditional in indigenous knowledge about the earth and the environment and sort of more modern scientific technical environmental expertise uh, and they're having a conference next November that's focused on people working as allies to indigenous people so they're, they're hoping that people will come from all over the world to sort of share what we've learned about doing this work and that it can be a real rich kind of cross fertilization um, there's a variety of other upcoming events, and uh, so we're very excited about this and think it really has potential to, to transform what, how New York State relates to the Haudenosaunee. And uh, we undertook it with some trepidation because it's a much larger and more ambitious project than we've ever uh, conceived of or undertaken before. But we really think that based on the response we've been getting, that, uh, that it's going to move forward, that it's going to be a great success, and really uh, make some waves to move things forward. And we all know that that certainly is desperately, desperately needed. So thanks very much.